Yes, go ahead. Oh, oh can we name it? Are we alive? <laughs> Just checking. If we are alive. <laughs> we were ready to go live, and then all of a sudden, Joe said, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we all panicked. So please, hello everyone. I'm Karen. This is So Unsafe, and this is Patchwork Party. Yay, we're here. Yay. So please get um, come online, comment, let us know if you can hear us, if you can see me, if you can hear me. We I did two test runs today, and it looked great. So hopefully between three o'clock and now, looks good and sounds it's, good. And Still there. looks great. Hey, and Fabish, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for oh, coming back. Yay! All right. Hi. Oh, what's, did you say Rosemary? Hi, Rosemary. Thank you for joining us. We're here. We did it. You can see us. Six people on. Oh, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. So I am so happy that you can. Oops, I just whacked my um. My mic, did that make a great big pound on your ears? I hope not. We're just so happy that you can see us and that we're here. We've set this up a couple times now. And Sherry's like, I'm not setting this up again, so this better work today. <laughs> so the good thing is, the longer it took us to do this, the more projects I found for us to show. So it's an even bigger show than it was going to be a couple weeks ago. But now the next one is coming up. So we really scrabble in to get more things. So we're, it's going to be fabulous. I've got all kinds of demonstrations for you tonight. Um, you're going to learn how to do um, a continuous bias binding. You're going to find out how to make some of these cute little bags. You're going to learn how to make some pom-poms. We're going to show you how to make the trinket bags. Yay! People have been asking about these little trinket bags forever. So I'm going to show you how to do these today. In fact, I panicked about 20 minutes to 6 because I thought I left all my samples and stuff at home. And Joe's like, well, you can run home and get them. I'm like, oh, oh. but I found them. So we're going to do the little trinket bags tonight and show you all kinds of other fabulous things and show you a little contest that we're going to have that I hope you're going to like. So I'm going to kind of mosey around the front. I, oh, so let me tell you again that I'm just so excited that you're all here, that we're doing Patchwork Party, that you can see me, that I'm here. I'm not, does it look like I'm underwater or anything? So this, I'm Karen. This is So and Save, and we are here for Patchwork Party Live. Yay! Make sure that you like us, share us, and comment um, so that you can, your name can go in for a gift card that we will be giving away at the end of the night. We have five gift cards to give away. So um, only the people who like us, comment, and share get put in for that. So please share our video tonight because we've got lots of fabulous things to show you. Okay, now can I show them what we have? Sure. Okay. <laughs> if you have any questions as we're going along, just shout out, and we will answer your questions as you, we go along. I'm just going to kind of work in no particular order as you know i just kind of jump all around this is a fabulous line a christmas batik line from kaufman fabrics and just a really cool cool batik christmas with a little bit of sparkle to it so it has there's lots of pieces lots of different designs um, this one is just spectacular. Look at this one. Nice. That's fabulous. Look at all the colors in that. Little poinsettias with little gold snowflakes dropping down. So pretty. So lots of fun things that you can do. I have to, we haven't done anything with this yet because it's just kind of on its own without me doing anything. But pretty soon, I think we've got a couple little things picked out to do with this. But a great big beautiful line. We even put together some holiday um, six packs for you. So there's a six pack of the new Robert Kaufman Batik line. So we have some combinations of that. So these are all the Batiks. We have all kinds of other ones. Here's another fabulous one. This one's been very popular with the, bur with the little um, cardinals on and silver as opposed to gold. So there's a little... Um, six pack of that and then another variety just various different christmas batiks that are um christmas fabrics for our six pack lots of different ones so you can even come in and make up your own so we have the empty six pack cartons available for you to 
um, purchase and fill up with whatever Christmas lines you like. Remember, you need a combination of half yards and one yards to equal six yards of fabric, okay, to make up your six pack. That's 78 people in here. How many? 78. Oh, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. We made it. I'm just so happy. You don't know how many sleepless nights I've had about this. Okay, so we're happy to be here, and I've got lots and lots of things to show you. This I demonstrated last year, this cute little three-dimensional tree. Um, if we need to do another demo, we'll do another demo, but it makes a three-dimensional tree plus its own little tree skirt. And what you need is the, and I just, and then you need the bozal tabletop Tannenbaum pack of um, batting. I'm not sure these are on our patchwork party section of our website, so we might have to pop those on for you. I don't think I put those on. I wasn't going to show you these because we didn't find the sample, but we found our sample packed away before, about two hours before class. So don't forget, any of these items that I'm showing you tonight are on sale through next Monday in our patchwork party section of our website, Panko PP20, and you'll get 20% off of your purchase of any of these fabulous things I'm showing you tonight. So Tabletop Tannenbaum, really super fun, makes a beautiful, just think about these as your Tabletop Tannenbaum. That would be really pretty. Might have to make another one. So that's the Tabletop Tannenbaum and our beautiful batiks. I'm going to talk a little bit about our cute, cute, cute Santa hat pillow. It has a little zipper on the bottom. Super easy to put in. The instructions for this are really fun and easy. They are kitted up and they include the pillow along with the white um, Shannon fabrics for the bottom and polar fleece for the top. And... Um, enough yarn to make this beautiful pom-pom. So let me demonstrate how to make this pom-pom. It is so much fun. Once I made one, it was like, oh, I just want to keep making pom-poms. So this is a great thing for the grandkids to make. Helps you, you can just make a bunch of pom-poms. So let me show you how to make a pom-pom for this cute, cute, cute um, Santa pillow. So the bottom of it is made from the Shannon cuddle fabric so it's really super soft and the top is made from polar fleece which is also super soft so this is a pom-pom maker it comes it looks like this before you start winding yarn around it and in a second you'll see that it comes apart just like this this and let me pop this part so it comes apart like this and the all, all i did was wrap yarn around this little edge so let me show you how it starts up. If this is probably stapled, then I won't be able to get it off. Probably is. Okay, but you can see how this is, goes. Okay, it sticks like this. And then all you do is take yarn and wind it around this little guy. The more you wind around it, the puffier and puffier and fuller your little pom-pom's gonna be. So this is kind of addictive. Um, there's a really good set of instructions on the web, on um, the back of the container. So, bunch of um, yarn, wrap it around. Great project for the kids to do. Then, once you got it as full as you want, you're just going to, oops, come on. This Maybe this is not the scissors to use. Okay, let's try this one. Um, you're going to pop it back together, just snaps back together. And now I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut. Yes, I'm going to cut. So I'm just going to cut right through. There's a little groove right here, which you can't see because um, I had wrapped it with yarn. So there's a little groove, and I'm just cutting this right here. The whole thing is going to stay together. I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to cut the other side. Okay. Just like this. Now I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to put it through this slot. And I kind of pull it, pull it around twice. So I just put my yarn straight through this slot, kind of pull it tight and stop and tie a knot. Oops, I'm going to flip it around. Tie a knot. I tie a couple knots. 
just to hold it in place because you don't want them to fall apart as you go around. So tie a couple knots. That's all I did. So I cut right in this little V groove that runs around this. And then your yarn wraps around the center through this V groove as well. Okay, so then, okay, so now we're going to just pop this all apart and out comes your pom-pom. Ta-da! Got to pull them apart in the center. Oops, I just pulled some of those out because I was holding on to it. Don't hold on to the strings as you pull it apart like I did. Cut your string here. And there is your adorable pom-pom. It's so much fun. So you're going to have to... Do a little trimming. So you do a little trimming to make him look all really cute and lined up. But you can see how the grandkids can do these. They're small. There's like four sizes of pom-poms. This is the extra large pom-pom. Isn't that cute? So much fun. And a great way to use up like your old scraps of yarn. Let the kids make pom-poms. And I remember making pom-poms when I was young and just loved it. So isn't that cute? people on now. Loving that. Did everybody see how that worked? Takes a while to wrap that yarn around, so that's why I had wrapped it. Um, we came to patchwork party tonight, because it takes a little while to wrap that around. So it just clips back together. Come on. It just clips right back together. It's about how, as far as it goes. I guess that's as far as it goes. Clips together like this. So I started out, I pulled it open, and wrapped my yarn around here, and around here. Flopped it back together, cut along the groove, tied it around the groove, and off, off we go. Ta-da! So much fun. These are addicting. I want to make more now. Now I have to make another Santa hat for my pom-pom. So that's my story on that. Really cute, right? So kits for these. Um, include enough yarn to make a pom-pom. Pom-pom makers are sold separately. Um, polar fleece for the top, Shannon cuddle for the bottom, the zipper, as well as your pillow. So everything you need to make this adorable little pillow. Yes, ma'am. Uh, all four sizes of pom-pom, can they be made with that one gadget? Um, no, there's different size pom-pom makers. Although I noticed just now, which I didn't see before, that there are little numbers on here. So I bet you could make some smaller ones by using these numbers. It says one quarter, one third, one half. So you could probably make some smaller ones, but there are smaller, small, medium, large, and then this is the yumbo. Yum. This is your yumbo pom-pom. So this is as big as they get, and then there's other sizes that make smaller ones. So really fun. You could put two of these together and it would make a little snowman. Wouldn't that be cute? Yeah, really, really cute. So kids love to be creative with these. So the other thing that I didn't show you over here, we have um, jelly rolls of the beautiful batiks from Robert Kaufman. So these are fun too. So those should be on our um, the website under Patchwork Party. All of these little projects should be under there. Make sure that you share our video, like our video, comment so that you can be put in um, for, the, for the gift card drawing at the end of the night. Okay, now we're going to move from Christmas to kids. So we're gonna look at um, Harold the Hare. Isn't he adorable? So great little kids project. This quilt is 54 by 65. We have kits made up and are available for them. Um, there's lots of fun go withs with this. This is adorable. Check out the little Harold the Hare and his friends. Little carrots, little bees. That's really super cute. Um, there's, a pl there's a plain white one that goes with it as well. If you don't like the other colored background. So we have the um, quilt kit made is kits to purchase. And I also have a really super cute pillowcase that I'm going to have to pop over here and grab or just have it hooked on here. So this is the cute pillowcase that goes along with it. How cute can that be? Just adorable. So you can make the quilt with little pillowcase um, pillowcases to go with, and it makes a great gift. 
for that young one that you have to buy, that you have to make a quilt project for. Really simple quilt. This is the panel. The panel is all the way through up to here. Then we added a couple borders and some squares up in the corners. And that's all there is. To super fun, super easy, which is kind of what you want for young kids quilts. Don't want to make a lot of half square triangles and flying geese and all that other stuff. Something fast and fun is great for them. All right, over here, we are now going from kid stuff to the kitchen. We have, um, this is called coffee chalk. This is called chalk, chalkboard coffee. And it's by J. Wecker Fitch. And it has the biggest panel commonly known to man. This is the piano. And these have actually been selling really super well. Check this out. You can cut up parts of it. You can do all kinds of different things with it. It's like a chalkboard at a coffee house. And she just, you know, puts her fabulous spin on things as you go along. And really, really fun. Fun, fun, fun project. Great big panel. But if you're not in for the great big panel... She also included these really cute um, placemats. So there's a placemat panel. We have kitted it up with the front so that you have your front and your back. This is the back of your placemats. Really cool, right? And the binding. So it makes six different placemats. There's one. I'll show you the next one. So six placemats. They're really nice size too. Really fun. We took and we also put a border around these. So there's a little bit of a border here. So the panel is the black center chalkboard kind of part. And then we added the, blue, the teal dots along with the black binding. And then this is the last one. So really, really cute tape placemats. Love those. And then this, again, is your back on those. So that'll all be in your kit. The teal dots, the back, and your panel. Along, and these, this fabric has been selling really well. There's a great coffee, just an all-over coffee one. This one's really fabulous, too. Really cool. Coffee beans, swirls, um, coffee words. Joel kind of come along and give you the whole shot it's a huge line of fabric oh she God. usually does i know really big but it some really cool going. things it does it keeps going joe's like it keeps going here's a teal one with just coffee cups really kind of neat here's another one like our backing but in a different color wave this was similar to the back ours had the black backing on it so this is the same um, print, but on a white background. Like who doesn't love coffee? I know. The people who can't drink coffee for a reason, can't have caffeine, those are the unhappy people. And then there's kind of this taupey gray one as well. So really, really pretty. We need something for our coffee bar for the, from this. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to make a table runner. Maybe next month we'll have a table runner out of this. All righty. So that's going to be, Joe's like, very excited now. Um, okay, we are going to come over here and talk about our Lori Holt, um, some new Lori Holt things that we have. We have this, fa oh, you know what I didn't do? Um, can one of you girls just go and grab a panel of, oh, wait, I think I have a panel in here. Never mind. I, I hid one away in here last last time we weren't able to do our project okay i have a panel i have everything to show you so she has this um be happy panel and it's made from kind of a canvas a decorator weight canvas to make eight um, project bags and i did some kind of different ones here and i'm going to show you how to do those um well how about right now okay I'll show you how to do these right now. These are so fun, so fast, and so easy to do. So in your kit, you will get, this is kind of cool. You get the panel, and your panel 
comes with all of these project bags already printed on here. So on your panel, which is a huge panel, as you can see, so here's half. It is big and it's so cute because look at all of her fabulous fabrics. And then this is the other side. So this panel makes eight project bags. So it will make eight large project bags. Oh, eight. It will make four large project bags and four small project bags. Okay, eight bags all together, four large, four small. It all even comes with little tags that you can make to attach to your project bag. How cute can that be? So cute. So of course, I sort of deviated from her instructions a little bit. There are instructions on the panel which tells you how to put these together. If you look at each panel piece or each project bag in the panel, she tells you, she has, tells you where to put the zipper and what color zipper to use. She has a set, look at this, isn't this cool? She has a set of eight zippers that match, exa are dyed exactly to match the fabric in your project bags. And she tells you which zipper to put on which project bag, which you could do or you could switch it around if you want. So on this project bag, she tells you to put the sea glass color on there. On this one, she has Riley Gray. Um, what else? On this one, she has Leaf. And then on this one, she has... So she tells you which color zipper to put on, wh on which project bag. And um, they are all dyed to match all of her fabulous, fabulous colors in her fabrics. So let's take a look at how to put one of these project bags together. You can follow her instruction. Now I have little, I have little yarn, yarn worms everywhere here now. Okay, that I trimmed this. That's okay. I'm gonna hit my iron. Alrighty, I took and I, I'm gonna, all right. There we go, off the table. <laughs> the girls love me in the morning when they come with the vacuum. And then Jim really loves it when all that yarn gets all twisted up in the vacuum. Loves that. Okay, so I took and I quilted my project bags. The instructions that she has for her project bags have you sew your zippers on, or your one zipper. And I love these zippers because they have two, it's a two zipper opening, so you can just open that straight up. Really cute. So she has you just, even I even kind of deviated on this one too, because I gave it a little bit of a, of a interfacing on the inside. All you do is take one of her project bags, you put the zipper on, I'll show, I'll show you step by step in a second. Um, I'm turning it the wrong way now. Here we go. We're gonna just go this way. So really, everything is drawn out. You cut on the lines and then you fold on the lines. So you will first put your zipper on and that will detach this from this. You're gonna fold this, you're just gonna take and flip this all and fold it up and stitch up the side, across the top, and down the other side. Makes a bag. Um, I put um, some shape flex in here just to make it a little bit stiffer, to give it a little bit more body, but really that's all you need to do. You, if you have a serger, you could serge these edges or do another finishing stitch on these edges on your regular sewing machine so that you wouldn't have a raw edge. Um, this one, the small one, is nine by nine. Nine by nine. The big one, the big one is 14 by 11. Okay? Um, so you could just make these bags like this, finish off your edges, call it a day. Yes? Is there a kit or do you just buy the panel and the zipper? There is a kit, and the kit includes the panel and the zippers together. So you're go all good to go. We may have to add that. Oh, I thought it was in there. Okay. Um, 
I can, I know, half a second. Here's our kit. So that's fine. So we will get that kit on there for you promptly. Here's the little half a second. There's how, what it's called. Okay. Um, I know. Aren't these cute? These are just the best thing. I was so excited to get these. The panel came in first. And then we waited. We did play the waiting game for the zippers. And they finally came. So that was very, a very exciting day. So on the large bag, I used soft and stable. That's the little foamy um, stuff that you put in. And I like this a lot for the big bags. So here you can see where I used the soft and stable. This is soft and stable. It's that foamy stuff. In the smaller bags, they still have little guys floating around here. In the little bags, I just used scrap batting. And that gave the, little, the smaller bags plenty of stability. In my big bags, corners as I, as I put it together. I kind of like that little box corner look for the big one. Yeah, it does look good that way. Yeah, and I just left the small one just plain. Okay? So let me kind of give you kind of a rundown. I can show you a couple of variations. I used some of her rickrack on this bag across the top and bottom of the zipper just to give it a little decoration. And then a little piece of rickrack on the bottom. So we used a little rickrack there. I had some mini rickrack that I ran across this little, the little um, stripe that she put on there just added a little rickrack. So you could do all kinds of different things, add some pizzazz to your project. Okie dokie. Let me show you how this goes together. And I kind of show you. So these are all the different, well, not all the different ones. This is the big one. This is the one big one that I have finished. And then here's a small one. This is the front and the back. What did I say these were? Nine by nine? Eight by eight. Another small one. And I quilted them all different ways. Here's another quilt. Oops. I'm just looking at the... He's looking at all the stuff. The tag and stuff. Oh, the little tag and stuff. Aren't they cute? And you could just add those tags anytime. This one, of course, I forgot to put my tag on. Actually, so I could show you how to put the tag on. And I can just open up that little seam and tuck it in. So here's really this cool. one. They are so cool. So you can make these for yourself. Make some, give them as gifts to your quilting friends. It's, it's all a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to move this over here. Did you line those, Karen? Yes, I did. So lining would be separate, extra. So if you have some of her fabrics, you can use those extra scraps as lining. And I'm going to show you how I lined them. She, did a pro she has a video out that shows you how to quilt them and line them. But when she sews them together, she still has a seam showing on the, in, you, she has, still has raw edges showing on the inside of her bag. And I don't like that. I like it where, I have one all the way done, this one. Where on the inside, your insides are all finished off. That was the one too. I tried it, I tried like three or four different ways. So this one has the inside so that your inside seams don't show. You don't have a raw edge showing on the inside of your bag. And I'm going to show you how to do that in about two seconds here. So the inside of your bag looks as nice as the outside of your bag. And that's kind of, that's the way I like it. But you can do it any way you want. You can follow her directions exactly and be done in a, like five minutes <laughs> on a bag. Okay, so this takes a little bit longer. So the first thing that I do when I make one of my bags, and I think I have this set up. Okay, nope, I have it set up just in the right order. The first thing I do is quilt my bag. So this is another large bag. Love the hexagons. So I took the time and stitched around each one of these little hexagons, and then I kind of made just kind of a, kind of a diagonal kind of square on the bottom, and I just kind of stitched across the top. So you can do any kind of quilting on these that you like. And I just quilted straight through to the back of the soft and stable. So the quilting on this probably takes longer than it does to make the bag itself. But it's kind of fun to do some different things. So as I quilted this, I did not quilt this little white section in here where you put your zipper. I left that unquilted. 
Okay. Then I took, do I have one that I didn't? Nope, I guess I was going to demonstrate. So I took and next step, I cut right on this line where the zipper is supposed to go. So you can tell that this is where your zipper is going to go. This is where your bag folds. This is the front. This is your back. Then I came along and I pulled this soft and stable back and trimmed it out of the way. And I won't do the whole thing, but I just took it and I trimmed the soft and stable out of that center area. Okay, because you don't want to have to try to fold this whole thick thing up and put your zipper under there. That's not going to put you in your happy place. But you can take with a good scissors and just trim straight across. And I'm not sure that this is a good scissors. I keep picking this one up. So everybody get that all the way across. All right, so that you just have this section to fold over to attach your zipper. All righty. I'm going to slide that out of the way. And then I would do that on this bottom section as well. Remove this unquilted part from your zipper section where you're going to attach your zipper. At that point, I then take and I fold that little piece back. So here's where I had cut out. You can see where I had cut that out. Mm -hmm. And then I just folded it and pressed it all the way along there. Cool. Okay, this is all folded back. At that point, I took it and I lined, I lined this bottom part up with my zipper. About, oh, that's probably about an eighth of an inch away from my zipper. Okay, then I took kind of, I didn't use my zipper foot. You could use your zipper foot if you'd like to. My foot kind of just ran right along the zipper and then stitched right along that section there and just top stitched my zipper on. You can put another line of, of stitching here if you'd like to, but I just put one and it works just fine. At that point, I'm going to lay this part of my zipper or my, my bag up on top of this. I'm gonna lay it down. No Joel's like, no problem, I got you covered. And line these two edges up and this is going to be stitched right along the top of this so that it ends up looking like this. So here's your zipper. And you're gonna have some sticking out on either end. That's a good thing. Uh, the zippers are the same size for the small bag as they are the big bag, so you're gonna be cutting a lot more zipper off of these smaller bags. But they all end up hanging over the edge. Alrighty, now if you, you could just leave your bag like this and what she would tell you to do, so even if you don't quilt this, if you just make it the way she said, you would just take your fabric, you would still cut where she showed you to cut for your zipper, fold those back under, stitch your zipper on just like I, I instructed. Then this is simply going to fold up and you're gonna fold this right on. There's a little dotted line that runs along here, which you can't see now because I kind of quilted along there. But on this one, I quilted all of these little pieces. So it looks like I actually sewed all these pieces together. So it acts, looks like I actually made that little piece of fabric, but I didn't, it's all cheater. So I just stitched on all those little lines. That took a little time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put a movie on. And you can see that I've added my little tag here so that when I sew this all together and it's gonna fold right along that edge that she has, and this back is always larger because I think she gave you a little wiggle room here, depending on how much space you give in your zipper area. So you could have, you could show more of your, the color of your zipper in here if you wanted to by sewing it closer to the edge of the zipper tag. So at this point, you can just sew up along the top and back down. Trim off all your extra. Make sure that you leave your zipper open more than I did here. Make sure that you leave your zipper open about that much when you're stitching all the way around. So you're gonna stitch up, over, and down. And then that's when I box my corners. Alrighty, at that point you could be done, but not me. Cause I wanna cover all of this up and I wanna make it look nice like this. And my other one looks like this on the inside. 
so you can kind of see how this looks on the inside. Yeah, really cute. I love this fabric. So I kind of picked the teal one that matches the red on the outside, but makes a much nicer bag on the inside. So what I did before, before I sewed all of this together, I, I kind of laid this out how it's going to be, trimmed off this extra strip of fabric that's along the top. Okay. I then took and used this as a pattern to cut out, I have a piece here somewhere, to cut out my lining. All righty. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to measure down. So this lining is actually for this little bag here. I haven't done this yet. So this little bag, I would measure down from the top, however much this is. And this is, oh, it is what, three inches? It's about two and a half inches. So I would fold this down with right sides together, two and a half inches here to accommodate for my top. I actually can't even measure, but... And then I would flip up the bottom, just like you were making the regular bag on the outside, except I'm just using one regular piece of fabric, leaving a space about a half an inch or so for your zipper. So this will go around your zipper. I then sew from top to bottom, top to bottom here. I make sure I backstitch on, on the tops and the bottoms. At that point in time, I simply, is this the one? Nope. Okay, where's the one I didn't sew? Not that one. Come on. Here it is. I simply tucked one bag inside the other. So this is just, so now I just flipped my bag, wrong sides together. And you could try to put this through your machine. I thought it would be a little difficult to get this into my machine and make a nice straight stitch to stitch this on. I stitched this by hand. So on my big one, I just stitched it across by hand and attached it above the zipper and below the zipper. And it makes it look so nice. So nice. Look, you could use it inside out. And so this one will be the same. Now all I have to do is stitch across the top, attach it to the zipper across the bottom, and I'm done. So just kind of makes a lot nicer presentation on the inside, I thought than having those raw edges and surging them or doing whatever. But they're your bags. You can do it any of these ways that, that you like. And they sure do come out cute. Really adorable. Love them. I can't wait to finish the rest now. Okay, so I have them all in different, different stages so I could show you. So that's how that works. Any questions on that? Really simple, fun project to do. I would say, it took, it took me a while to quilt them and then to figure out how to line them. Somebody asked, do all those bags come in the kit? All eight bags come in the kit. So the panel has all eight bags printed on it, wherever my panel went. Here's my panel. So just to go over it again. So the kit will come with the great big panel that has eight large bags and eight small bags four large bags and four small bags printed on it. It also has a set of instructions on how to sew your tags and how to sew the bags together. You can kind of deviate as I did if you would like to. So your kit will come with the, the, um, the panel and then the really cute zippers that match. Cool, how do you box the corners? How do you box the corners? Um, on the inside, let me grab one that I kind of have. Before I sew, put my lining in, and before I put it all together and stitch it up, I have my outside, and then I'll have, you know, my inside lining piece. You're going to take it, you can decide how much you want to box this. I pop open my seam, actually I take my scissors, first of all. So you've sewn... Um, up, over, and down, backstitched on the bottoms. And I take and I just clip, clip where that little fold is, because that will help you to box that seam a little bit. So there's like, just clip like right here. This scissors is not sharp today. Um, so I just clip that little seam open. 
And I do the same on the other side. Okay, oopsie, I should hold it up. I should hold it up so you can see it. Okay, and I make a little clip. This scissors is terrible. I got something going on with that. Okay, at that point, then you're just going to take, and you've got your seam line stitched in the bottom here, so you know where that was going to fold. So the fold at the bottom, you're just going to take, and you're going to line up your side seam with that fold on the bottom. And I don't have a pin. Yes, I do. One second going off screen. <laughs> Grabbing it. Okay. So I have lined up my side seam like right along the bottom of that, of that little stitching right along there. And then you can decide how much of a box that you want on the bottom. And then I just stitch straight across here like this. To, to give it that square end. To square that off right there. Um, some people trim that off. I probably did in my big one. I'm not sure. Yes, I did. So then after I stitch this, make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end going back over here. So whatever this measures from that point to where your stitching is, you're going to want to repeat that over on this side as well. Gotcha. And then you're going to want to do the same with your lining when you get your lining sewed together. Okay, so then that makes a little boxed, you can see it's kind of inside out, but that kind of boxes off your corner. So you're just kind of making a little triangle here, and then trim this off to about a quarter of an inch. But make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end of your stitch. Box corners, such a cool thing, so easy. So then it will sit just like that. I like the way it boxes, especially on the big ones. Okay, any other questions that I can answer for you? So the lining would be something separate that you'd have to purchase. I have a lot of wraps left over from some of the projects that I've done for, with her stuff. So I was able to um, use some of my scraps as lining. Okie dokie. No one here has any scraps. Nobody here has scraps. <laughs> no. So we can help you out with your scrap building problems. Um, I did find that I needed to take and press this little, your, your zippers are folded to fit in this little bag. Um, I needed to press this fold out of it. Otherwise, when I sewed my zipper on, it gave it a little lump. So make sure that you press your zipper nice and flat before you use it on your project. Okie dokie, let's continue on. Oops, nope, I need those zippers for later. All right, I'm gonna lay this all on the floor. Really fun project. So cool, so cute. Okie dokie. Let's go around. Okay, so I didn't finish giving you, telling you about all the Lori Holt things that we have. Don't forget that we have the cute little mugs. These are for the stitch mugs that go along with the stitch fabric. Then she just came out with these cute little Be Organized containers. Aren't they the cutest? Little containers, three little containers come together in a cute little box kind of all boxed up like this. Um, we decided that it would be fun to make some little kits, some little Be Happy um, fabric sets. So we took her, her little containers and we put a fat quarter of some of her fabrics in each one of those little containers and packaged them up so you could give them as a gift or give them to yourself as a gift. Really fun for the holidays for your, for your quilty friends. So really cute can fill those up with really fun things. Okay, so we did these guys. Let's come around and take a look at the flowers and feathers. So flowers and feathers, I think I showed you this project unfinished last month. Um, this is our finished project. See a little thread there. Um, really cute, th yes. Are the jars glass or plastic? plastic? The jars are plastic. Yeah, but really fun and cute. Can fill them up with all our little buttons and things. Oh, I'm so excited. I love them. Um, and they are, all, obviously, the colors match her fabric, so it's really fun. This fabric has been flying off the shelf. I'm going to tell you about this tonight because by next Patrick party, it will be gone. We don't have much left. Um, we have kits for this quilt project. The quilt project also makes the pillow. So really cute pillow cover in the kit as well. We have four of these panels left. Oh, look at the birds. Yeah, the birds are, they're just stunning. And it just looks watercolor, like somebody did it with a watercolor. 
which makes it just so pretty. The fabrics have just been going really well. I have two kits left, um, and I have four panels left. And the go widths are starting to go down. I'm not sure I can get any more. So, and sometimes if I can get it, it's going to be months and months and months. So, um, yep, Joe's going to try to get a view of all of that because it is just really super cute. There we go. A little bit too much glare, maybe. But just little teacups, pretty little chickadees, and little all kinds of little fun little birds. And it is just as pretty as pretty can be without being too pastel looking. So they've been, it's been really popular. So they are on the website tonight and they're going fast. Like I said, four more panels, this is called two kits, flowers. flowers and feathers. Okay. 61 by, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> um, 60 by, by probably by 55. It's almost square, but not quite. So it's probably 61 by 55. So really pretty. Some of these birds are crazy. I know. They should do just a fabulous job. It's 61 by 65 and a half. Oh, 65 and a half. Okay. I couldn't tell the number is not quite right. So feathers and flowers and feathers. Very pretty. Then we have, I guess I'll stand over here. Then we have um, bouquet of stars. It's called so a really pretty line of um, blues and yellow um, and greens. Just kind of summery, springy looking, just happy fa fabric. It's called sunshine. And we have charm packs and jelly rolls. And the fabric line is just really super pretty. Slide this up anymore to give you a better view. But just really look at how sweet that is. Oh, yeah, we can. We can peel it back. Peel it back a little. There's some more little flower petals. The greens are pretty. Those are really pretty with the blues. And this one is just really great with the flower, with the yellow and blue and green flowers. So we have kits for these as well as the charm packs. That's called bouquet. Of bouquet of stars is what the um, quilt is called. Sunshine is the line of fabric. And like I said, we have charm packs and jelly rolls of these. So really fun. If you're part of our mug rug club, this is our mug rug for October, the little pumpkin, really cute. So if you are part of the club, this should be coming your way. And if you're not, you can just um, purchase these individually. So this is this month's. This cute little Halloween thing is from um, the one of the Patrick Loyce books that we just got in, full of fabulous and fun projects to do. And this was the first project that I did out of one of his books, and it really turned out cute. The winter one will be next month. We have, yep, we have the winter one going, and I've got a couple projects out of this on and a couple others that I've still got going on. So these are the projects from here. Oops, I'm dropping things here. Okay, let me pull over here. So I've got this project in the making. This one, we just finished this, so we'll be kidding that up. So really fun projects to work on. Um, I finished this in an afternoon, so it's really nice just to have a one-day project that doesn't take a lot of time and is really cute. So um, he's got some really fun things to do in his books to um, do. So now that we've kind of walked around and talked about a few f other things, let's talk about these cute little trinket bags. People have been asking about these trinket bags forever. So I've got to grab a little, a little drink before we get going. These are great. Think of these with some Halloween fabric filled with some Halloween candy for the kids and grandkids. And I just goofed up my zipper here. Okay, fine. Um, they open up. They're finished. The seams are finished off on the inside. They're kind of a little kitty wampus bag. People have just really liked these and have been asking how to do them. So we're going to kind of go through how to do these. And they're fast and quick. And you can get one of these bags done in like an hour. So you can make a whole bunch of them. 
So Christmas fabric with little Christmas candies or, you know, you could put a pair of mittens in those or a pair of socks and give it as a gift and a little gift card. Really, really fun and sweet. So let me tell you what you need. You need to start out with two fat quarters. Um, I have one fat quarter for the inside and one for the outside or just two coordinating fat quarters. You're going to cut, here we go, where are my pieces? You're going to cut from each fat quarter, you're going to cut one seven by seven and three quarters, is it? Seven and a, one seven by seven and a half inch square from each fat quarter. So these are my two, my two colors that I'm using this time. So seven by seven and a half inch squares, not really squares, a little bit rectangly. And then I took some shape flex and I cut that about a half an inch smaller and lined one of my pieces just to give it some stability. And you want it smaller so that when you sew your quarter inch seam, you don't, it doesn't get too thick. So that's why I made it smaller so that it would fit on the inside. So one of each of these out of each fat quarter. Then from each fat quarter, you're going to cut two, what did they come out to be? Three and a half by seven and three quarters. Three and a half by seven and, a th and th three and a half by seven and three quarter inch rectangles. Two from each fat quarter. Then you will line one set of them with some shape flex or just a lightweight interfacing something to give it a little body scraps use up your scraps on this girls and again cut it about a half an inch shorter and you know smaller so that when you press it on the inside your interfacing doesn't go all the way to the edge so that when you sew your seam it doesn't get too thick so you're going to have two of those okay then you're going to take these and you're going to sew all the way around. You're going to take each one of these and put them together, right sides together. Right sides together, sew all the way around. Leave a hole for turning. Turn and press. So I have actually done that on this one. And you're going to do the same on these two pieces. All the way around, leave a hole for turning, turn and press just like you would on just most normal things. So I have this one already sewn and you know how to turn things right side out and flip it around and press it. So then once I've done that, oops, I need this guy. Um, I am going to take my two long pieces that have already been sewn and pressed and I'm gonna attach my little cute lacy zipper. These are little Kimberbell zippers. It's going to be way too long. They come in a bunch, bunch of different colors, um, but really cute. I lay them on top of these two pieces and then I simply top stitch on top. And I usually use the same color thread. These I used white so you could of the zipper to attach these two little, your top pieces to your zipper. That's all you have to do to sew that on. You can pin this um, because you're doing one at a time. You can binder clip it on and just hold it on with a binder clip and then stitch it on using a zipper foot to get it nice and close and nice and straight. Then the nice thing is because this zipper is so long, you can do that without getting your zipper in the way, your little zipper tog, but you wanna make sure that these guys line up. Alrighty, now the fun part begins. You're going to take, and I guess my plan was, I guess, so now you're going to take, once you've folded this, or turned this right side out, I now have my top with my, it's actually inside out, so let me show you this way. So this is my top with my zipper already sewn on. Okay, and my big square that's on the bottom. And I'm going to line this up on opposing corners. That's the big trick to making it kitty wampus and, and, and let's, it gives it that little pudgy kind of kitty wampus look. So I'm lining my zipper right sides together to the corner of one of, of my um, square. So you can see I have an, an opposing corner. So this one 
and you're going to stitch this on. So I would come up, I would use my binder clips and kind of binder clip it. And this zipper is open and I just kind of line that up going straight into that quarter. And I come up here, I stitch, and then I come over here and I stitch on this edge. Okay, so it looks weird. Um, your seam might not be perfectly straight. Your stitching might not be perfectly perfect, but these are very forgiving. It's okay. The secret is to put this on two opposing corners and stitch it into the corner and the same over here. So now when I turn this right side out, my seams, you still have a seam line in here, but they're finished off. So they're already pre-finished off. So I did the same on this corner. Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I'm going to take and I kind of line this up and I find, I kind of find the center of this piece that connects to my zipper. And I kind of make just a little itty bitty mark or a little itty bitty clip here. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Find my center. You could do this before you sew it on too. Either way, find my center and just make a little itty bitty clip, about a quarter of an inch. All right, now this is going to match up with the other opposing corner. And by putting that little clip in there, when you come around and line this all up, you can see that now I can kind of spread this and this can come to this side and it will go down. So now it will press so I've got this, now I'm running this to the next corner, my center to the next corner, my center over to the edge. And I'll pin this so you can kind of see how it's going to end up looking. This is like the shortest pin in history, right here. You can binder clip this, you can pin it, it doesn't matter. So then you're going to connect, and if this doesn't want to spread out right where I had this corner, I'll make another little itty bitty clip. Just like just a, like a quarter of an inch, not even. And then that'll spread open and lay flat for you to come over and stitch from here all the way around to make that nice little corner as you come around. Is it, it's, does it look, make sense? To write a set of instructions would be, I don't know, really hard. So you'll have to come and watch this video many times to see how to do this. So this is gonna line up over here and we're gonna stitch this corner. And then we're going to repeat on the other side, just like this. So you can see how it makes that kind of kitty wampus little bag. Mm -hmm. And you'll do, you'll repeat, and you'll do the same thing on the other side. It's so simple, but yet crazy. <laughs> Am I right? It's kind of a crazy bag. And then it ends up kitty wampus and cute. It's like the cutest little kitty wampus bag you've ever seen. So it'll look like this. Mine is inside out. So it makes that puff, cute little puffy bag by sewing onto opposing corners. So the hardest thing is to get up and around that little corner, but you can do it. Go slow, stitch slow if your stitching isn't straight. When we did this in class, people's stitching wasn't straight. They had a little pucker in here, that kind of thing. We turned it, we flipped it right side out. It looked great. So it doesn't have to be super straight. It doesn't have to be super perfect because it makes this really super cute little bag. Any questions on how to do that? It is just fast, easy, fun. There are some people saying they're gonna have to try it. You're gonna have to try it. You're gonna have to like rewind this video to this part, do a little part, give it a try. But yeah, you're gonna have to try it. Once you do it, you'll go, Oh, yeah. Oh, this isn't hard. They were like, oh, no, this isn't hard. I get it. What? But you have to do it. And you have to see somebody doing it in order to do it. So really super fun and easy. Yep, you'll have to try it. If you have any questions, any problems, I'm always here, ready, willing, and able to help you out with that. You can watch it on YouTube later because it, it will be on our YouTube channel. So don't forget to like us, share us. Um, and comment on our video tonight to get don't forget that everything i show you tonight is on sale on the patchwork party section of our website um pp20 pp20 gets you your sale price 
All righty, I have just a couple more things to show you, and we'll be doing good. So some beautiful fall fabrics that we have. Yes, ma'am. We did not talk about the candy corn. We should talk about the candy corn. All right, between now and next Monday, we're going to have a little contest. I took and I decorated up a little, oops, thrown them all over the place, some of these little canisters. So in he, each one of these canisters, they are filled with candy corn. So the contest is, for every purchase you make, you get to guess how many pieces of candy corn are in these containers. The person that comes the closest not only wins the cute little canisters of candy corn, they also win a $25 gift card. So every time you shop, you get to put in another guess. If you're shopping online, just put in your guests into the comment section and we'll put you in for the drawing. Next Monday night, um, we'll, we'll, we'll announce the winner. So are you in? Does it sound fun? Candy corn in the little candy, in the little canisters. One week. You ought to hold it up again so they get a good look at it. Okay, get a little good look at it. <laughs> Here it is. Let me hold it from the top. One little canister, start counting. <laughs> one little canister. So um, all three canisters. I need to know how many are in all three canisters. Okay. So it, whenever you make a purchase here at the store or online, you get you get a guess, and we'll see who wins. So very fun. So a week from Monday, we're going to announce the winner. So you can start that tonight. You know. So if you make a purchase tonight, you get to put a guess in. We just need your name, phone number, and. Um, your guess, which we get online anyways. Cute little, fun, easy, fast um, fall placemats using a little um, panel. A lot of times you guys have some panels or panel pieces that you don't know what to do with. This is a great idea for those really super um, fast placemats. So we have placemat kits with these in. Um, the instructions show you how to make these placemats by um, putting the right sides together and flipping. We kind of like it with a little binding on. We think it makes a little bit nicer finish. So the kits have enough fabric for binding in them. Each kit makes two placemats, I believe. Um, the instructions give you, um, gives you the instructions for two placemats as well. So you can either make it and turn them or you can add a binding to them. So really cute little placemats for fall. Then we have, um, we have this really great pumpkin um, table runner. It's the 60 degree runner. It says has, um, on the back, it has really cute fabric that matches the front. It says harvest blessings, grace, autumn gatherings, all kinds of really nice fall phrases. So um, the kits come with the front and the back to make these one with a binding because we kind of like them bound. Um, binding is not included in your kit. You need a quarter of a yard if you want to add a bind, add a binding. So we added a quarter of a yard of black and made a binding on this one. That's a whole lot of pumpkins. That's a whole lot of pumpkins because they can then match your table runner can then match your placemats. So there's a panel. We have a kit that has the front, the back, and the binding to make four placemats, I believe, are in a kit. I believe there's four. I don't think I have any more than that in here, in my little stash. So I think it makes four placemats. So you could make four placemats and get a kit for your table runner, and you are good to go for Thanksgiving this year. Really super cute. So those are in the Patchwork Party section of our website as well. And you'll get 20% off of those for the next week. And what are they called? This is called Autumn Day Runner and Autumn Day Placemats. Yes, and Autumn Day Placemats. So really fun. Then even simpler than these is our little, it's kind of a, it's called Pumpkin Harvest Runner. Just really simple. The, the placement is actually just the width of fabric and it's printed so that you could just make a table runner. A half a yard of the front, 
a half a, I think it's half a yard, half a yard for the back, and binding are in your kit just to make a super simple table runner really fast. Hmm? Pumpkin. This is pumpkin harvest runner. Pumpkin harvest runner. So you can quilt it up any way you like, and you're good to go. Okie dokie. Joe says I'm supposed to stop. 705. I have one more thing to show. Keep going. Okay. He said I can keep going. Okay. Out of the um, St. Patrick Lois Celebrate uh, magazine, I think it was this one. Pretty sure. Yep. Here it is. Um, out of this magazine, I made this cute little table, um, table topper for 4th of July. You know me, red, white, and blue, and stars. Um, the trickiest thing about making this, well, there's not too many tricky things, not really. Um, he really does a nice job of giving you instructions for doing this. You want to make sure that when you cut out your pieces here and here, that your fabric isn't laying like fabric always comes like wrong sides together. It all has to be laying the same direction so that these guys spin all the same way. If they're laying wrong sides together or right sides together, you're going to get a right and a left. So one will be going this way, one will be going that way, and you will not be in your happy place. Ask me how I know that. I didn't think of it when I cut out these big pieces, but when I get down to this little kind of triangle kind of piece here, I went, oh, I got to make sure those are all going the same way. And I went, oh, I should have done that with this piece too. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> so that I had to recut. But that's the trickiest part of this. It all came together really well. And I think it's really, really super cute. Um, it took, yeah, it takes a little time because I did a lot of, um, I did this. He also sells embroidery designs to do this. So I used his embroidery design to embroider around my stars. And it really made them look nice. So that was a little trickier, but um, really still fun. So the other kind of funky thing about doing this is that you now need to put on a bias binding. I know, I just thought I heard you all gasp and cringe. Joe did too. And he's never, he doesn't even know what I'm talking about, but he just cringed. I know you're going to cringe. It's going to be okay. I'm going to show you a super simple way of doing this. And I know that you've all heard this, um, of doing this before and might have tried it and might have been successful and then gone, I, I just not sure how to do this. But it is so easy to do, a, we're, going to, we're going to show you how to do a continuous bias binding. Which book was that one? This one is in the one with the cake on the front. <laughs> That's the easiest way to remember it. The one with the cake on the front. Really cute book. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this continuous bias binding because it was really easy and it goes really fast. So it's not going to take long. You're going to start out with a square of fabric. And it can be any size square. The, enough to go around this, you probably need about a 15-inch square of fabric. So if you're going to do continuous bias binding around a quilt, the bigger the square, the more bias binding you're going to end up with. Okay? But you're going to start with a square of fabric. On that, from that square of fabric, I do not even have a cutter or anything. Okay, doesn't matter. From this square of fabric, you're going to take and you're going to cut it in half diagonally. Okay, so I get two triangles. Okay, cut it in half diagonally once to make two triangles. One triangle here, one triangle here. Make sense? Got it? That's easy. Easy so far, right? You are then going to take those two triangles and you're going to sew them together. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to punch. You brought me a cutter. Huh? Yeah, I'm just going to quick cut it. This is not going to be... Don't do this. Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> Use a ruler. Cut it in half straight. Okay, and cut it all the way through. Okay, so you're going to use your ruler. You're going to cut it in half diagonally. Okay, now I have two triangles. So the first triangle, I'm going to sew these together. I'm going to sew my two triangles together so they end up going like this. Can you show people? So my two triangles are going to come together. I'm going to sew them together like this. Right sides together quarter inch seam, 
press that seam open. Okay, one point's down, one point's up. Easy so far, right? You got it. Okay, so this is the one where I've sewn these two together. Got one pointing down. Here's my triangle here. Here's my other triangle here. I'm going to sew, I'm going to cut um, my binding at two and a quarter inches for this project. If you're going to use do a quilt and you want it two and a half, you're going to do you're going to draw your stripes at two and a half. So I'm going to start and I'm going to put a ruler at the bottom of this and I'm going to measure up two and a half inches. Draw a line with my Frixion pen. Go up another two and a half inches. Draw a line with my Frixion pen. Keep going until I've drawn lines two and a half inches or two and a quarter all the way across my big piece of fabric. So you can see that here. Can you see those lines on there? Sure. Those are all two and a quarter inches from edge to edge. Yep. All righty. Now I'm going to make a tube out of this. Now you're not, you're, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to sew it so that this lines up with this like this. All your edges, your two points line up. If you do that, you're going to be very unhappy. It's not going to work. What you need to do is take the bottom of your fabric and I'm going to lay it down if you can see that. I'm going to take this bottom edge and I'm going to line it up with my first line that I drew over on this side. Okay, so when you do this and it ends up all kitty wampus and not very straight, you know you've done it correctly. I know, it looks crazy. You're going to line this up with this edge and your top edge over here is going to line up with your first line over here. I know, Joel's shaking his head. He's like, no way is this going to work. You're going to, so it's going to end up looking like this when you sew it. This little point is going to line up with this edge. This edge is going to line up with your line that you drew up here. Alrighty. So when you're done and you've sewn it together, it's going to look like this. Okay. Can you see how that looks? So I lined up the bottom with this, the top with this line. Now it kind of makes more sense because now I'm going to use my little scissors because that other one doesn't work. Now the lines that I drew, I'm going to start cutting right on these lines. And I had a bigger scissors that I brought with me. And you're going to cut. I'm not worrying about cutting this very straight, but if you're cutting, you're going to cut nice and straight right on your lines. And look what's happening as I start cutting. I'm coming up to a seam. There's a seam and I'm going to continue to cut. I would pick a bigger scissors for this. I could tell you that right now. I had another scissors in with my stash of stuff to bring. So you can see how it's making a continuous line of bias binding. I'm doing a terrible job of cutting, but that's okay. We're not going to use this for real. Here's another seam where I had sewed it together. A continuous great big long line. See how easy that is? Does it make sense? The big secret is to offset that corner with the first line on your, that you drew on your strip, on your strip of fabric. All the way around, isn't that cool? Joe's like, this thing's gonna go on forever. So you can see how that's gonna work. And I'm getting around, I got one more going around. A bigger scissors. This is the joggiest. <laughs> so now you can see I'm coming around to the end. I'm trimming it off. And there we go. Ta-da! Continuous bias binding. Now I can come along and use my rule and cut it nice and straight. But you're going to cut it nice and straight because you're going to take your time and you're not going to be holding it up and standing backwards as you do it. So nice and stretchy. Bias binding. Yay, yes. The name of the quilt behind you. This little guy. This one, we have a kit right here, and it is called Legacy, and it is 80 by 80, and we have kits available. It's very cute, super cute. Riley Blake fabric. 
to ask her questions. Anything else? Anything else I can answer for you tonight? Any questions that you Tonight, we're so happy that you joined us. We also want to thank you for um, those people who donated to our Stuff the Truck um, program over the weekend. Thank you so much for your um, donations. We stuffed that truck and it was awesome. We are also going to have another um, donation coming up. We don't have a date for it yet, but it's our annual um, donation for the homeless veterans in Union Grove. So watch your emails for that. We will give you dates and times and what items that we need to be donated. And we hope that you'll be able to come out and help us out with that. So until, wait, I have two things. Sample spree, not until sample spree. Next, second Monday of the month, next month is November 8th. November 8th. So please join us for patchwork party next November 8th. Um, coming up, sample spree for this holiday season is November 22nd. That's the Monday before Thanksgiving, I think. And our first Skitty Bolt sale of 2022 <laughs> is going to be Wednesday. Yes, mark your calendars for a Wednesday, January 5th. So join us for that. Mark your calendars for that. There's a lot more things coming out. So watch your emails. We got a lot of fabulous things happening between now and the end of the year. So we'll be telling you about those as time goes by. Don't forget to like us, to share us, to comment so that you get put in to win a gift card tonight. And we want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're so happy to be able to come into your homes tonight and, show, and share a little bit of fabric joy with you. So we will see you again in a couple weeks and a week from Monday to announce the winner of our candy corn um, drawing. So see you in a week. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night. <laughs>